G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be proving for you the conservation of momentum. So let's begin by saying we have a whole system of particles. And here we are, I'm just drawing a couple of particles. They can be as many as we like, but I'm just going to draw a few. And let's say that we have a whole bunch of external forces acting on this system. So for example, we can have a force F1 acting on this particle, maybe a force F2 acting on this particle, and maybe a force F3 acting on this particle, etc, etc. Right? I've already proven for you in a previous video that the integral of the net external force, so that's F1 plus F2 plus F3, etc, etc, until we add them all up. So I'll write that as F net external, the sum of all external forces acting in our system, dt, with limits from one initial time t1 to some final time t2, is going to be equal to our total change in momentum. So it's going to be equal to our total momentum at some time t2 minus the total momentum at some time t1. Okay, I've already proven this formula in a previous video. But now I want to show you an interesting result. What happens if it's true that the net external force happens to be equal to zero? So what happens if, what happens if our net external force happens to be equal to zero? This can happen if all the forces coincidentally cancel each other out, or if all the forces happen to be zero, right? Then we're gonna get this result. Well, what happens in that case? The left-hand side of this expression will change, so let's write it in. This will become the integral of, from t1 to t2 of 0 dt, right? And that's going to be equal to our total change in momentum. g total 2 minus g total 1. Okay, now let's evaluate this integral. We know the integral of zero is a constant, but when we evaluate it, it's going to be zero when we plug in the bounds. So it's going to be zero is going to be equal to our boring right hand side, which is our total change in momentum g total two minus g total one. Okay, now what we can do is we can bring g total one to the other side. That's our initial total momentum. So that's going to be g total one is going to be equal to g total two. And you may not realize it right away, but if you think about it, we've proven the conservation of momentum. t1 and t2 were arbitrary times, and we've shown that at any time t1, the total momentum is going to be equal to the total momentum at any other arbitrary time t2. So we've actually proven that momentum must remain the same always for a system if there's no net external forces acting on them. And this is a big um, uh, uh, caveat here. If it's true that there's no net external force acting on our system, then we prove the conservation of momentum. I hope that made sense, guys. Cheers.